The Weekly Harvest, an in-depth look at the Brandon Weekings and the WHL. Washman trying to come up with it for Allison. Here's Allison right in front. He scores! Brandon Junior Hockey fans, you've waited two decades for this. In the league's 50th anniversary, your Wheat Kings are the champions. Well, hello once again. Welcome to episode 45 of the Weekly Harvest Podcast, brought to you by Coors Light, the official beer of the Brandon Wheat Kings. Please drink responsibly. My name is Chris Falco. He's Brandon Crow. Crow, how are you this week, bud? I'm good. Uh, things are good, man. I, I was saying last week how excited I was to finally have some hockey news, and now we've finally got some Wheat King roster news and some camp news, and uh, there's four games already in the books already in the Western Hockey League, so uh, things are good. Temperature looks good for the rest of this week, and uh, yeah, things are really starting to look up. And I know uh, you had a couple exciting things going on this weekend, and one of them, your, one of your boys got into the newspaper holding a fish as uh, you had a little success. Which which lake was that at, and, and where did you where did you get that picture snapped? Yeah, so Briar was in the Rivers Banner that was caught uh, at Rivers Lake, Lake, Lake Wadapata. Um, I, I totally just butchered that name, by the way, but uh, uh, that's that's where where it was caught. Um, but that was actually a little while ago. Uh, I was contacted and they wanted they they saw something I posted online, uh, know somebody who knows somebody at the paper and they wanted to use a photo like that. Uh, and I was like, yeah, for sure. Go, go right ahead. So that was actually from from a little while ago. This past weekend, we did go fishing again and we had very similar success. Actually, he would have been he was holding a jack. Uh, it was almost the exact same size, but we were out at uh, Minnedosa. So in all my years here, I've never fished Minnedosa. I, I don't know how. I mean, there's so many lakes uh, kind of, I mean, we're, we're lucky around here um, in every different direction. you got multiple choices in the river, of course. But uh, up by Minnedosa, I went there last weekend and then went back again this, this past weekend. The kids love it. They got the, the great trail all, uh, all, all groomed so they can literally skate in this big circle. They have like a rink that's, that's all uh, uh, groomed as well. Um, all the shacks are kind of on one side. Of course, you can still get on the lake. Uh, the, there's not much snow out there, so you can drive on on pretty much any kind of vehicle. Even some cars were out there. So it was uh, it was just kind of awesome. It was just, it was super nice. Uh, great, great kind of family spot uh, out there in Minnedosa. You know, you weren't catching any huge fish. But, you know, when it comes to the kids, as long as you get a couple of nibbles and keep the action going and they could skate and have the fun. Little hill right there as well. So we brought the sleds. They could sled for a little bit. And it was good. It was a, good, it was a really fun weekend. Well, I'm glad that uh, you know people are still finding a way to get things done, and it's 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 crazy to think that we're almost at a full year since the two year or two weeks to minimize the spread was originally uh, promoted, and it's it's unfortunate that rinks and rec facilities and everything else are still closed throughout the province. I know they're slowly trying to get things back opened up again, but the fact that people have uh, decided to you know pick up snowmobiling or or snowshoeing or skiing, snowboarding. Uh, ice fishing, all sorts of different things. Uh, I know the ponds and the croca curl and all those uh, outdoor activities have really taken off. So good for people out there in Westman to to really find your own entertainment more than anything in a in a strange time. So a uh, good job, everybody up at Minnedosa. And I know Clear Lake's got some great paths as well, and everybody else that's helped keep the outdoor rinks and the and the lake surfaces uh, good and safe for the kids. Uh, it's been it's been a crazy winter. I'm thinking, based on the forecast, we're almost near the end of it, but you say that, and then there's probably going to be a big dump of snow coming at the end of March. So well, uh, we're this, almost through it. This next week sure looks nice. And then uh, today was actually really cool. For the first time since November, Jude and his hockey team got back on the ice together again. They, they were able to do the, like, the team wind-ups with the latest regulations. They are allowed to do that on the on the like outdoor rinks. So right. I, I know a number of teams are doing that one more time just to get the kids together. A lot of these kids, I mean, they've at this point grown up playing either with or against each other at multiple teams and multiple sports throughout their lives. But still, when you don't see each other for five months, I'm sure for some of them it was like, oh yeah, that guy, <laughs> like that kid. Like, you know, it's so, it's, we kind of joked, but because if you don't laugh, you're just so sad because, you know, normally these are, you know, bonds that are, that, that, that are made, friendships, um, but the kids, they had the smiles when they got out there, so I know a number of teams are doing that this week, trying to get all that, you know, that, that one last time in, because the temperatures this week are going to be awesome. We're getting up into the plus uh, plus digits uh, every single day, so uh, the, the time on the ice is very quickly coming to an end. Outside, 
inside were somehow just getting started with the WHL. And thank goodness, Crow, that this is going to be uh, our second last podcast where we're not going to have live Wheat King hockey to talk about. We have been filling time talking about Wheat King memories and what's to come and just everything that is completely, we'll be honest, like not super relevant, right? Like not for this time. Finally, we're going to be doing a podcast again during a hockey season in just two weeks. And spring time's coming yeah. in two weeks. It's just, I would say, <laughs> mentally, how do we even get around this? But I don't even care. I am, you know, it, it, on the day that my kids wrapping up, we're about to get ready for the season opener another week in a bit. So weird times, but man, this was a, this a great, uh, uh, I think this is a, the, the, a great talk with Darren Ritchie as we get excited for the season. Yeah, of course, the Weekly Harvest, uh, as always, presented by our good friends at Coors Light, uh, the official beer of the Brandon Wheat Kings. Uh, of course, we want to remind everyone that while you're uh, enjoying some silver bullets, so do so responsibly, don't drink and drive. But uh, we know that there were a lot of fans in Alberta. Uh, this week that were cra- uh, cracking open their bar fridge, uh, finding some pink Whitney's and getting themselves ready for hockey because uh, there were four games this weekend. And uh, to me, the on ice uh, product didn't matter. It didn't matter if they were 15, nothing blowouts. It didn't matter what was going on in the ice. The fact that I could tune into our good friend, Dustin Forbes on, on Friday night and a, a little bit of Bob Ridley on Saturday night. Uh, of course, we'll talk about his milestone in a bit as well. Both guests of the show of Troy Gillard. Uh, we want to thank, or pardon me, uh, welcome him to the Western Hockey League broadcast fraternity. He's taking over for Cam Moon. He got to do his first games this weekend. And then of course, Andrew Peard uh, in Edmonton entering his second season in the Western League. So it was great to hear some radio and some TV action. Great to see the, some players on the ice and uh, wow, we are back at it. They have a bit of a different setup though. They're playing only on weekends one team gets a bye week and the other team gets uh, the full or pardon me uh you play the same opponent on the weekend and the other team gets the bye week so they won't play again till friday and saturday but uh it was so cool to see games on people all over social media were talking about it we had our group chat going talking about different things and it just felt like a nice friday saturday night uh like it always used to didn't it it was awesome. Like it's just it's a feeling that we should have been having, of course, months ago, but it was just somewhat a sense of, of normalcy in life. Uh it, it was really, really nice. And you know, speaking of uh, you know, you said it could have been a fourteen nothing blowout. A couple of the games, they weren't too far off of that. There was some high scoring affairs. And uh, the WHL today has announced that the players of the week for the or the player of the week and then the goalie of the week, uh, but both coming from the Edmonton Oil Kings off of uh, a, a couple of just a uh, blowout games over the Lethbridge Hurricanes 7 to 1 on uh, night 1 and then 7 to 2 on night 2 and it was Dylan Gunther the first overall pick uh, just a couple years ago crow in the WHL Bantam draft uh, doing a lot here for Edmonton four points on opening night followed up by another four points kids got eight points in the first two <laughs> games of those of the short season I mean that is that is quite the start. We were we were we were saying like some of some of the stats are going to be so skewed in this shortened year and how it's going to look, but uh, that's an incredible start. And then uh, you know backing them up, Sebastian Casa had a couple of fantastic games. Obviously, oh. uh, led with a one point five goals against nine thirty five save percentage. So he was he was tested. He stood up. Edmonton off to a, a great start over Lethbridge. Uh, again, only uh, the only division that got started. So they had to pick from a couple of uh, games for the player and the goalie of the week. But definitely deserving with those two. The biggest thing that I'm taking away from opening weekend in the Western Hockey League is Bob Ridley. I mean. We've had him on our Ditto. show. He's Ditto. told us some here. great stories. 4,000th game behind the mic uh, on Saturday night. Now, unfortunately, uh, you know, he was heading into the final weekend of the regular season one year ago, uh, getting set for his 4,000th game. The building in Medicine Hat was sold out for that night. The team had put together an amazing tribute video. They asked all of us broadcasters to say a few words to Bob. It was going to be a whole big uh, presentation for Bob. And then, of course, COVID hit. The season was canceled. He didn't get a chance to get the salute in front of the fans that he so rightfully deserves. But he hung in there, stuck around all summer, and uh, came back with his 39-99 and 4,000th game called behind the mic. He's missed only one game in Tigers franchise history. Uh, And then the league uh, awarding him with a new Bob Ridley Award for Media Excellence that's going to be handed out every year 
uh, based on a committee uh, that's headed up by him moving forward. Uh, so a huge honor for him to have an award named after him. And uh, and just what a milestone. You and I talked about it when we had him on the show. 4,000 games. To think about it, he has seen every single Wheat King versus Tiger game ever in history. Like That's just crazy to me to think about the man is the definition of a living legend. So, you know, for him to be to be doing this for for the season to get stopped right before that amazing celebration. I mean, and I'll, I'll be honest, even us across the league, when it happened, we all felt really bad for Bob because we were all also really looking forward to that night. Um, it, it's an incredible accomplishment. Uh, so happy that they got to still do somewhat of a form uh, of this. And then you know that when the when the fans return, and I mean, and who knows what 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 the future has? I mean, when he was on our podcast, he was saying that you know he doesn't want to take it too far at a time. What he's going to commit to, and 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 how much longer he's going to be doing it. But uh, whenever the time comes that uh, the fans return, you know that they're going to be having another Bob Ridley night and it's going to be uh, just like you said another sellout crowd where the where the fans can properly give their appreciation for the man who's done so much for that for no, not just the team but for that entire city he has forgotten more about the Western Hockey League than you and I will ever know uh, and they talked about him on Hockey Night in Canada that night Ron McLean of course Kelly Rudy who played his junior hockey for the Medicine Hat Tigers and had Bob as his radio guy was on the panel <laughs> with Ron McLean congratulations him. So I, I thought that was super cool. Uh, you know, uh, Bob's just a great guy. And, and as, as I tweeted out, you know, to put things into perspective, he told us the story of how he used to call senior hockey games with Byron McCrimmon on the ice. That's, of course, the father of Kelly and Brad. Uh, and he says he remembers a young Kelly in like toddler clothes with a little stick and a ball running around the rink and nobody could keep up with them. So that puts you in perspective of how long Bob Ridley has been doing this. The fact that he called Byron McCrimmon and then called both Brad and Kelly through their playing careers and then went on with Brad coaching in Saskatoon and Kelly and Brandon. And now Kelly's moved on and everything that's gone on. He's seen literally everything there is to see with the McCrimmon family. It's crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, That's it for news and notes for this week. But again, as we get closer, it's going to be coming a whole lot more and uh, really looking forward to that. This week, instead of us doing more of the Week King talk, uh, because that's really what our guest is, uh, because now... For the first time in a while, we're not going back and telling, you know, asking stories. We're not uh, talking about days gone by. This is all very relevant as we sit down with the general manager of the Brandon Wee Kings, the first three-time guest, as we were, you know, <laughs> kind of joking. Uh, as you'll as you'll hear uh, t- towards the end, and also today in the office, uh, I was uh, we're we're kind of bugging him more about that. Uh, but uh, Darren Ritchie, general manager, and we really got Crow to to you know pick his brain a little bit about the way that he sees this season going and about uh, uh, his philosophy on the team that, that he's going to ice and kind of what went into some of the decisions. I thought we had a great talk with him. Yeah. And for some perspective too, if you're, if you're wondering, uh, maybe you're sitting at home, sitting at your computer, listening to this on your phone or whatever, go to the, go to the Wheat Kings website or head over to cutecountryfm.ca and pull up today's story with the full roster on it. Uh, it kind of gives a bit of a breakdown who's coming, uh, who's going to be there, that sort of thing. You can kind of cross reference. Uh, he kind of jumps around a little bit. We try to cover kind of every position forwards, defense, goalies, rookies, veterans, 20 year olds, Europeans, that sort of thing. So uh, for a full look at the roster, head to weekings.com or qcountryfm.ca, uh, and that all of that uh, information is there. But uh, Darren gives us an in-depth look at what him and the staff have been building for so long as we get ready to go into the hub. So uh, enjoy our little sit-down with the GM as we get one day closer to the hub city and the restart of the 2020-21 season. <laughs> Our guest this week as we get set for a little Hub City Hockey is General Manager Darren Ritchie. And uh, a lot of people wondering, is is Darren going to be in the in the bubble down in Regina? How is this all going to shake out regards to staff, players, and that sort of thing? Well, uh, we'll get to all those answers here this week as we finally have some hockey content. Darren, uh, first off, where are you right now? And uh, what's it been like the last 10 to 15 days trying to get everything organized? I'm uh, I'm in Brandon still, and I plan on going to Regina here uh, shortly. Uh, it's been uh, it's been busy. There's lots of things that you have to do, uh, you know, for your team, for the league, and uh, lots of build up to it. Uh, 
uh, happy to say that our guys are all in, got there safely. Uh, they're in their room starting their quarantine uh, yesterday, and they'll be in there for the next uh, five days, uh, hopefully getting out and starting practice on, on March uh, the 4th. So uh, when are you going to actually be making the trip out there? Because I know, of course, yeah, I, like uh, usually as soon as they get in here and they're on the ice, you'd be right in the rink, you know, getting their first looks at the first skates. Is that going to change this year? Are you going to be able to see the first skates that they're doing? And is that how the timeline is going to work? Uh, I hope so. I know that the, the league is really uh, working on getting that uh, to be possible for uh, the general managers to watch uh, their teams practice. And obviously there's lots of dialogue going on with the Saskatchewan health authorities. And uh, I'm hopeful that we, uh, that I can get in there and watch, uh, watch our team practice and build up to the season. Uh, hopefully I can be in there with you too. Cause I mean, there, there's my, uh, there's my back to work paycheck <laughs> sitting on a ledge waiting for some doctor to decide if it's safe for me to be in there or not. So hopefully we get the thumbs up uh, and I can be uh, somewhat in a safe location in the rink along with other potential media. I know other radio guys are all kind of chomping at the bit to watch their team too. Uh, when you guys were sitting around all summer and, you know, I know there was a lot of planning going into this, but how many different depth charts and rosters did you look at? Was there a different roster for, okay, we're going to start October. Here's a roster. Okay. Now we're starting in December. Here's how it might change. Did it change kind of every month as this whole timeline changed? Yeah, I would say a little bit. And you're always discussing, uh, obviously your first plan was thought we would have a full regular season and we were returning a lot of players, uh, a lot of returning guys that, uh, uh, we thought we'd be back, so uh, you kind of plan for that, and you got to make sure uh, that the younger guys that are going to stay, they have to play, and you know you have those discussions. And then, as it moved along and your season was getting shorter, you have to have those discussions again. Now, what is the best uh, for your team this year, and then as well next year, and how how is that development going to look uh, for your players? And you have to keep having those discussions as a staff, and uh, you know I think. Our uh, staff's really happy where we're at and what we're going into the hub with. I mean, in most years, of course, we talk about in junior hockey, there's always that turnover. You always have to look forward to the future. That's why it's so risky to 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 sell for the now. Sometimes teams have to do that. They got to pull the trigger on that deal because of, you know, it's their year. It's their championship year. What do you think it's going to look like across the league this year, Rich? I think, it, like, is the past trade deadline, the fact that there was zero trades, do you think that that's kind of the indication that a lot of GMs are taking this as just a year to get ready for next season? Or is this one that you're still, you know, trying to, you know, be like that top caliber team? You know what I mean? Well, I think, uh, you know, I've said this a couple of times, we're, we're, everybody's competitive people that play or coach in our league. And I think once that puck drops, you're playing to win, you're coaching to win. And it doesn't matter uh, if you have an old lineup or young lineup, you're, you're, you're playing to win and uh, that's going to help uh, your players get better when you play competitive, meaningful games. And I think all the kids in, in the Eastern division hub are going to be really excited. It's going to be almost to the year that we've played hockey. Uh, so I, you know, I, I think people are going to just, it's all about helping their teams get better for this year and next year. And, you know, I think you're going to see really competitive hockey. And I think, uh, I think it's going to be good for for all the teams in our, in our division. I know a lot of people have said, "Well, oh, it's you know it's tough because you know these kids haven't skated or or these kids haven't been able to work out in an actual fitness facility unless they have one in their house." But in the same breath, you can make all those arguments, but realistically, every single one of these players has been in in the same boat. So, is this the the most level playing field we'll ever see in the Western Hockey League? Because we're all these players are starting in the exact same spot. Yeah, I, I don't know. This is we've never seen this, so I, I don't know what to expect. I would expect, uh, you know, seven days of practice is going to really help everybody. And yeah, you're you're probably right, Crow, that it's pretty level. Uh, you know, obviously some kids went and played some junior A uh, before Christmas, but nobody's played hockey since I would say mid November, uh, right? So, um, I, I it's a, it's a it'll be it'll be different. It's going to be different, right? So you got to be really patient. Uh, I don't think you, 
push panic buttons or worry about guys. I think you got to be really patient, watch how things play out here for the first couple of weeks. And then uh, you, you evaluate your team and, and make sure that you're doing the right things to help your team uh, improve. And it's such an incredibly exciting time as a Wheat King fan because you look at where the season ended last year. Uh, you look at the vets that were going to be returning and then this incredible crop of uh, newcomers, the 17-year-olds, the 16-year-olds that are all going to be vying for spots. This was going to be one of the more highly competitive camps in recent Wheat King history, regardless of this situation. How do you see this unfolding now, Darren? Well, I think... Uh you know, there's an internal competition. Uh, when you have a training camp, guys are always competing uh, to make your team to start. And then you have that internal competition to get more responsibility. Uh, you know, if it's power play PK, being on the ice, uh, down a goal at the end of the game or up a goal, right? So everybody's competing to get that extra ice. And I think that's now what we're right at. We are now at an internal competition to compete. And, uh, you know, I think that's good for your team. I think that makes your team better. And I think that's how we got better last year. Uh, we had some really good uh, internal uh, battles to to get better. And I think that did happen as uh, our season went along. And I, I really believe you need to have depth in our league to to compete. Well, let's take a look then at some of those young uh, guys that that Chris just mentioned. And some of them have had a small little cup of coffee. They've come up as an AP and played in two, three games, um, you know, whether it be in the preseason or, you know, throughout uh, the last couple of years since they were drafted. But I guess we'll start uh, on the back end uh, when you look at some of the young guys that are coming in. And, and obviously the two names that people will see that, you know, they were kind of watching over the last few years and Logan Hammett and Jacob Hoffroggy and Hammett, you know, the, the reigning Sask midget defenseman of the year and Hoffroggy, a kid with the Saskatoon contacts, a couple of Saskatchewan kids, decent size on them. And they're going to join a pretty veteran group on defense. So what do you, wh where do you set the bar with these guys? Because they are, you know, like you said, they're competing with a lot of older guys. Yeah, it's uh, their, their job is to push the guys above them. They want to play and uh, that's uh, what you want. So I think it's going to be a real good experience for both of them. Uh, both boys got to stay after training camp last year and get an exhibition game in and, some, and a couple of weeks of practice, which I think will help them. And they went back to their teams and did exactly what we asked to be leaders and, and to improve. Um, so again, their job is to come here uh, and, and learn more. And, you know, it's going to be, you know, high, high top octane. Uh, every day you're on the ice. Uh, it's going to be a compact schedule of practices in between. It's, uh, you have to get your rest. You got to be mentally prepared. And for a young guy, uh, you got to come every day and push. That's, that's what your job is as a young guy is to push uh, every day. So Crow was talking so if about we, some of the oh, defensemen. Go. Yeah, so now we switch over and talk a little bit about the forwards. And, I mean, you had guys uh, much the same, got a little bit of a taste with Brett Highland, Jackson Dubé. Um, what do you see from those guys? And then I want to go back, Rich, and talk about on draft day, when you make those three first-rounders, all the excitement, it's all there. And then now, when we actually can you know, possibly see them for the season, what maybe that battle is going to be like just to try and crack into the forwards? Yeah, um, you know, Brett Highland uh, was our last cut last year, obviously was disappointed. And he went back and was the MVP uh, of the Alberta League, who's a really good, it's a really good league. And uh, he, he came in, played after Christmas and uh, played really well. And he'll get uh, lots of opportunity uh, to play and, and show his uh, ability to play with uh, top end guys. And uh, Jackson went back they, to St. Albert. I believe their team won the Max, which is a really you know, big tournament. They get teams from all over the world to go there to win that, to get that experience of winning a championship. Uh, I think that's going to be really beneficial to him uh, coming to our team, understanding what it takes to win a championship. And, and that, that's what you want. You want guys to, to, that win championships. Uh, the three young guys... Uh, that uh, we drafted in the first round, Nate Danielson, Tyson Zimmer, and Ryland Rosma. It's uh, it's exciting to see those guys come here and, and see uh, them push. Uh, obviously, when you always have younger guys, you got to make sure you put them in the right situation to succeed. And uh, you know, there there's 
no pressure on these guys. We just want them to come in and, and play. And they're just uh, another player on our team that uh, we're going to help uh, become better players as we go forward. And the other position, I guess, that leaves is is the goaltenders. And, and fans and Brandon have seen the two guys that are coming into camp before. Obviously, Ethan Kruger, you know, a, a, a longer-serving goaltender, veteran guy who's played a ton of games for Brandon. And then Connor Unger, a, a guy who's come in and got a shutout uh, in his first season as an AP in Red Deer. And he's played a handful of games, uh, played some Junior A last year, put up great numbers in white court. Uh, that's uh, going to be the two-headed situation there. Now, I know the NHL teams are requiring that third goalie and I kind of wondered if Brandon was going to bring a third guy along it doesn't look like that's the case but what's the what's the goaltending situation look like obviously you got two guys back there you know you can trust yeah I think uh real comfortable with both guys I think if you remember Ethan going on the coast trip when year he got hurt uh played all seven games uh carried the load did a great job it was a great experience for him and in then when Yuri came back and it was healthy after Christmas, uh, the games that uh, Ethan got in, he, he was really good. I know the shutout in Regina uh, played really well against Moose Jaw. Uh, so it, it's his turn and it's his time to uh, lead our team. He's a three-year veteran. And Connor is a really hardworking guy. He's going to push. Uh, really athletic and a hardworking guy and, and very mature uh, for his age. The other question I have, obviously, as we look at the roster, is the situation with uh, the two older guys in Luca Berzin and Cole Reinhardt, who are still with their American Hockey League clubs. Now, because of the rules, they are allowed to stay and play pro. Uh, is that your understanding they're going to stay there, or is there still a chance they could drop down or, or just enlighten us a little on Reinhardt and Berzin? Yeah, we, we don't expect uh, either of them back. Uh, their their time is to play pro, uh, is, is you know how we feel. And, uh, you know, real tough uh, decision to make uh, with uh, Duncan. Uh, when, you, when we were thinking about our team and preparing for our team, we thought we'd have a, a long training camp to let the guys, we want the guys to come in and compete for it. And obviously things changed uh, as we went along here and, uh, we, we had to make a, a real tough decision on a really good person. And, uh, that, that was, uh, you know, that, those are, those are tough conversations you have with uh, young men when, uh, with Duncan, especially when he come in here and, and I really believe he helped our team better, become better, uh, last year. And, uh, I appreciated uh, what he did for our team and, and I thank him. It's one of those things I was watching in uh, an NFL draft documentary the other day with a bunch of N NFL uh, GMs and every single one of them, there's about eight of them, every single one of them said the single worst part of their job as a GM is on roster cut down day when they have to let guys go. And I think that just falls from every level of sports as a GM. Last one before I give it back to Chris, the European situation. Obviously, Marcus Kelly and Kelly uh, comes in battling that injury plays 24 games he was starting to really figure it out obviously COVID hits that changes that scenario and then of course uh the young Russian defenseman on the back end what's the situation with those two guys where are they playing now and where are they like to likely to finish their seasons uh Marcus is in Finland uh playing with uh Helsinki uh there and then uh Yaroslav is uh playing in Russia uh, in his uh, with his club team and obviously uh, nobody can get into our country and felt it was best for both players to uh, stay there obviously they've been skating and playing games and uh, we it's uh, it's unfortunate because both players would have been uh, good players on our team and it's just uh, it's a situation that you have no control over with with COVID. One of my favorite things to kickstart the season is the announcing of the captain and then who's going to wear the letters, the leadership group. Uh, talk about uh, Captain Schneider, what, what Braden's going to bring wearing the seat of the team. Yeah, I think obviously Braden's been here for three years. Uh, no, sorry, four years. Uh, as a six-year-old and has played uh, against the best players every night starting as a six-year-old, moving his way up uh, to this year as a nine-year-old. Uh, just just a professional on and off the ice. Uh, treats everybody uh, the same way. Uh, leads by example, hard worker. And, uh, you know, I think it's a really good 
person for our young guys to watch in the dress room, obviously a world junior silver medalist. Uh, I think you can learn from those guys by just, just watching how they prepare themselves for games. And I, I know that's kind of the message that you always give your young guys when they come in to watch, you know, the Braden Shiners, the Ridley Greggs, the Ben McCartney's uh, of your team. Uh, just watch them, see how they prepare, how they get ready for games and, and try to, uh, you know, do that as well. So you, you become uh, a better player. What a what an absolute fantastic kid too to to to, to put the C on. You know, we King fans should be very proud of the fact that uh, the Braden Schneider is going to be the captain. I remember uh, Darren that uh, when he first signed with the team, it was actually in Red Deer. It was in the hotel, if you remember, during the Memorial Cup. Uh, Kelly McCrimmon didn't even know it was happening at the time. <laughs> he was a little bit surprised later, but the actual contract was signed there. And then I remember that it was the next fall. Uh, Pro V was of course going pro. We all knew that after the year he had. But if you remember, he came back in uh during the training camp just to play in a couple of the training camp games and he uh just was the th- what i heard the story was that he was going to just come back and basically kind of show some of the young de- defensemen and they prepared him with Braden schneider was that true do you remember that i, I do remember it too it's uh we've kind of over the years have tried to do the same thing with any of our young guys i think uh, you always try to put uh, those young guys that are coming in with your top guys because you want them to learn from them. So then it pushes down the, the culture going through. And I remember for sure training camp, uh, Schneid's playing with Pro V. And I think Pro V played a couple games. I think he played the three on three game exhibition. He did. Came in. That was my uh, first ever game on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. He, he <laughs> was, uh, it was fun to watch. It was his, probably, I think that might have been his last game as a weekend. Uh, but it, again, I, if you do that, I believe we did it with Ridley, with Nolan Patrick as well. Uh, okay. just for them to rub shoulders with those guys, sit beside them in the dressing room and, you know, just learn from them, just watch them. You don't have to talk to them. Uh, just uh, watch how they uh, do their business. That's uh, that's that, that goes a long way. And obviously uh, the older guys have been those young guys and you hope that they do uh, talk to the young guys and help them and, and uh, make them feel uh, a part of things. Well, Darren, you've been a part of this organization for a long time now, uh, going, I don't even know, what's the number, 19, 20, 21 years total uh, that you've been around? Player, do you even know the number? You didn't have to put so much sass on that, did you? No, I, I, I was just trying to, I, honestly, I was trying to do the math. Honestly, I don't I know. Do it. I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. So that being no. said, going back to your playing days and then into the, the coaching staff and then over into the, the hockey operations side of things, in the last handful of years, there's been, you know, there's been a lot of changes. Obviously, Kelly going to Vegas, that kind of, I don't, I don't know what the word is, but it, it just kind of changed things around the office. We've seen a couple of coaches, assistant coaches change. Obviously, athletic therapists change. The office staff changes. And then the ownership changes. Now you're in this role and it's kind of almost, is it like a fresh start for, for everybody with coaches? COVID kind of shutting everything down and now Jared's taken over in, in the ownership role and it's kind of a, a clean slate, new coach with Donnie. How, how do you approach this whole changeover of everything that you've seen in from a time where it was pretty stable for that first, I don't know, 15 years that you were involved? Well, it's a, it's a shock. You're, you're not, uh, you know, you're used to doing the things one way for as long as I've been here. Uh, you've known how to do it. You just, it's just like waking up and, brushing your teeth every morning. It's just as part of your routine. And then uh, obviously with the change, uh, you're, you're learning the new uh, ownership with Jared, what he likes, how things are done. And he's learning how we've done things. So there's a lot of uh, learning going on and it's been a really good transition. He's been uh, really easy to work with and uh, you know, he's done a, a lot of good things for, for our team in the short time too. So uh, you got to, uh, just be open and listen and uh, try to uh, make things work the best as you can. And obviously uh, we have a team to run and you try to uh, do the best, what you think is the best for the organization when you make decisions, obviously. And, uh, and there's lots of people that you have to talk to. Uh, Doug Jack Gasper, uh, our assistant GM uh, is a guy I talk to every day. And then uh, obviously with Jared, we, we talk a fair bit as well. And then <clears throat> with the changes, uh, you know, it's, uh, you're, you're ready for it, but you're not, you know what I mean? And uh, with Kelly and then with, with Dave, uh, those things you're, you, know, you, you just got to be ready for them and you got to be able to react uh, quickly and, and make sure that you're making the right decisions uh, for the team. 
I just going back to the leadership group. Uh, I know that the captain has been announced. Is there any uh, timeline on when uh, the A's are going to be announced? Yeah, I think uh, Donnie and the coaches will announce it here uh, sometime this week. I believe is well, when we're doing. I'm not sure if they'll do it before we get out of quarantine uh, or uh, just after. So speaking of quarantine and the situation, um, and you don't have to go into the full details of it, but obviously. <laughs> Uh, the situation in BC hasn't been resolved yet, but the U.S., they're working towards starting. We had games in Alberta this week uh, on Friday and Saturday. Um, and then, of course, the East gets going here right away. Uh, how much involvement did you have in any of the discussions regarding the planning? I, I know there was potential for Brandon to maybe be a, a host spot. How much were you involved or was that kind of outside your realm of expertise? I uh, was uh, outside my uh, realm. And obviously, you try to uh you know listen and give your input on how you think or hope things should work out and obviously we have good people that work in our league and and have uh to make the right decision for all teams that are a part of uh, our league and you know this has been a tough time for a lot of people and uh, i'm sure there's been some sleepless nights with the people in our league but they've done an excellent job of getting uh, us where we are and uh, you know I, it was really exciting to watch uh, the teams play in Alberta this weekend I watched all games and I thought that was uh, it's excited for us to be back playing and I'm excited for you know our players but also the the six other teams in our division to to get playing as well have you watched any of the central so far that just started this, this past weekend I did. Yeah. I watched uh, all four games. Uh, it, it was good. It was good to see the kids back playing and uh, it gets you excited because you know, you're, we're going to be soon as well. And uh, really looking forward to our guys getting on the ice. I was texting, uh, <laughs> I was texting with Scooter. Uh, obviously everybody on the podcast loves Scooter. He was one of our favorite episodes. Fans loved it for some reason. I'm not sure for some why shocker. he was such a great, <laughs> fan, fans loved Scooter. I don't know what it was. Anyway, I was texting with him and obviously he's kind of sending me some pictures of his setup and, and, and everything down there uh, from an equipment standpoint. But from a GM standpoint, I know you're on the outside looking in a little bit, but what are you, what can you do to, keep these players kind of engaged a little bit because for the first little bit, they are kind of stuck in their rooms and until they can pass all their testing. So have you planned anything? I know tonight you guys had a, had some sort of uh, zoom call type thing. Is that kind of the basis of what you're trying to plan for these guys a little bit? Yeah, we've, uh, Donnie's done a good job, a great job, sorry, as of organizing, he's put a plan together for every day. So today uh, we had uh, earlier in the day, uh, Kate McLeod and and uh, Kelly McGinnis talked to our players about media and how to approach it. And then tonight we had uh, Darren Millard uh, speak to our guys. And obviously you guys know Darren Millard. He's been on your show. And uh, for a Brandon guy to move up like he has through the world and, and now work for the Vegas uh, Golden Knights uh, game day presentation, I, I think it was a great story for our guys to listen to. So every night we try to plan to have a speaker uh, join our group on, on zoom. And I think they have some team meetings as well, going over systems and practice, just showing practice drills again, just to get that back in our guys' heads and, and getting them thinking about uh, practicing, doing things correctly and, uh, and systems. So uh, our guys have done a really good job. Our coaches are really prepared. They're ready. They're excited. And uh, you know, those guys want to coach their players. So uh, they want to get on the ice. They want to get going. And, and the next four to five days are going to be tough. Uh, there's no doubt oh, about it. I don't, yeah. I don't care uh, who you are. You're, you're stuck in a room. And, uh, but you know, when that time comes, it's going to be worth it. And it's going to be worth it. Small price to pay is kind of the way I was. We've got a broadcasters <clears throat> group chat and, and a couple of the broadcasters are, are in the hub and, and Craig Boschman and Swift and James Gallo and Moose Jaw just with their full-time jobs. And, both of them have said, hey, look, it may be a, a small little broom closet, you know, for some of these guys, but it's a small price to pay. Uh, a lot of the players have far better accommodations than what their radio guys are getting stuck with in the bubble. But it's a small price to pay because these guys want to play. And, hey, I think these players would sleep on a cement floor under on, on a sleeping bag if, if that meant that they got to play hockey. I don't think there'll be many complaints coming out of the hub. Well, I, I think it's real simple. We've waited this long to play hockey. Uh, I think you're going to do everything you can to make this work and be patient. And, 
you know, this is what everybody wants to do. We all love hockey. Uh, we've all dreamed about uh, playing it at a high level. And our guys are obviously going to get the opportunity to get playing in the Western League here uh, in hopefully 12, what is it now, 13 days maybe. I can't remember what the date is. But, you know, we're going to play hockey. So you've uh, got to be patient here and uh, things will work out. And Crow, if you want to live a life of luxury, you don't go into radio. Oh yeah, no, that was <laughs> for those guys to even jo- like to even joke about you know what kind of sandwich they're gonna have for lunch was kind of like, hey, come on, guys, we're radio guys, we're it's getting lucky they we're get getting a sandwiches sandwich. no matter where we are. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <right>. <laughs> uh, Rich, you've got yeah. a, a lot on your plate, and and when you look at this team and and everything that's going on. Uh, how much have you just kind of stepped back a little bit? Because I know for me, and, and Chris and I have talked about this, this entire year away from hockey, uh, I know you've still been a, a lot more you know, dialed in than us, but a, a year away from hockey, has it changed your perspective at all on, on everything that, that surrounds this game and, and what we do every day? Well, I think you, you probably take things for granted, obviously. Uh, you know, every day you go to the rink, uh, that, that's been taken away. Uh, from from all of us, and uh, you know, I think guys are going to appreciate things uh, better more. And you know, we've been, you know, our, our players in our league get treated very well, and uh, I, I think that they'll understand that probably better now than they did before. And like I said earlier, they they just want to play. They just want to play. And now we're getting that opportunity to play. Uh, we got to make sure we do it the right way. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that it's come, you know, to a year to, 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 to play again, but obviously we have no control, uh, on this uh, virus. And obviously it's starting to get uh, with the vaccinations and stuff. I think it is starting to slow it down. So, uh, I'm looking forward to us moving forward. And when the boys do hit the ice, they're going to be wearing what I think is one of the best jerseys we've ever worn. What's your take on the new on the new jerseys, Darren, and the and the return of the Wheat Chiefs? Yeah, I really uh, think they turned out really well. The Wheat Chief is uh, is awesome. Obviously, uh, back in uh, you guys early two thousands, I think it probably was when we had them when Braden Shen, Matt Calvert, and those guys played. I, I really liked the Wheat Chief coming down the arm. So uh, here now with it across the the waistline, I think it's a really good look, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, professional New York Ranger kind of look that classic look, I guess that's probably what a word I'm looking for. And, uh, no, I think, uh, I think the first practice will be either really, really good or it's going to be really, really bad. So, uh, <laughs> I guess I'm not too sure what to expect. There's going to be a lot of excitement. I, I don't know if the passes are going to be really good. There could be some grenades out there. So, uh, but anyways, there's going to be great. You know, the excitement's going to be there. You know that. Uh, you just gonna, might have to look the other way for a couple times. Uh, during they're, drills. they're going to look good in a different way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I hopefully, we get, you hopefully we get that rust out before we yeah, start, before yeah. we wear those jerseys. <laughs> that team looks very good while looking on. very bad. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was tuned in Friday night to Troy uh, Troy Gillard, who's taken over for Cam Moon in, in Red Deer. It's his first Western Hockey League game on the radio on Friday night. And I had to laugh because about three minutes in, he said, boy, the passes aren't very crisp here tonight. <laughs> and his color guy said, come on, Troy, you can't even... <laughs> You can't even make that comment. And instantly I thought, oh boy, okay, I better be careful because I can't, you know, I'm just as excited as the rest of the guys. But, you know, if it's sloppy in the first 10 minutes, I got to remember that I can't pick that apart because I'm not going to be very sharp either, I'm sure. So hopefully they can get the rust out and everything just goes smoothly. I, I'm with you. Yeah, it's uh, just like everything else. You're just going to be a little patient. And even uh, the, the game that you're talking about, I think Mike called the. Uh, <laughs> Cam Moon a couple times, you know, just so oh, he's yeah. not, he was a little rusty too. <laughs> so uh, that's going to be, I think that's going to be everybody, right? I think he, so uh, that's fine. Uh, that's, uh, I think we're all prepared to, for that. I guess before I let you go, I wanted to, to touch on uh, obviously Nolan and his injury situation. It, it was probably, the COVID thing was probably timed relatively well. He did get a lot of rehab time more than he wanted, but uh, what's the status of him? Is he a hundred percent ready to go again? I think so. Uh, you know, it's been 15 months. Uh, I know he's very excited to play you know, just like everybody else. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. And you know, obviously you got to be uh, no different than the, other, the young guys probably gonna have to be a little patient with them. 
and see how it goes. I'm just Chris, excited. You got anything else? No, I'm I'm just, I'm just so excited for this. I just uh, you know I want to want to get this quarantine over and and get those first shots of the boys practicing because I just know that even if the shots are taken from 200 yards away, you're going to be able to see the smiles on their face just because they're going to be back on the ice doing what they love and they were and we're that much closer to March 12th. Um, so I. Uh, at, at this point, Rich, is most of your job the next few days just kind of doing what you did tonight? You're just kind of facilitating some of the Zoom meetings between the players and different guest speakers? Or is it you and the coaches still working on things? Or is all that pretty much put to bed at this point and they know what they're doing? Uh, pretty much everything's set in place in, in place now. So we're it's our schedule is set for what we're doing uh, each day here for quarantine. And then... Uh, you know, we, we get our meals delivered to our rooms. We got some meetings, team meetings, then some Zoom meetings with special guests. So it's uh, that part's all taken care of. There's just some, you know, things behind the scenes that we just got to make sure that uh, we get tidied up. Right on, Rich. Well, this was awesome. We're glad uh, that you could do this. I know the fans have been just dying for some real, actual, relative weekend content. They've had enough of us talking about Ivan Provorov and Mark Stone and, and guys that are playing the NHL. They're pumped to, to have this back, and it was good that uh, you know you could kind of give a, a training camp preview for the, for the fans uh, this week, and hopefully uh, we can get into Regina and, and get this thing going without, a, without any hiccups. Yeah, I appreciate it, and obviously the you know, the first 10 days will be real important for, you know, all the staff and players in, in Regina. And uh, we've got to make sure that it goes off without a hitch. And once that happens, I think things will be uh, smooth sailing for, for everybody there. Thanks a lot for spending some time with us here tonight, Rich. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, third time, eh? So I think I'm probably leading the pack now, too, right? So I appreciate board, it. You, we got to get you on the very <laughs> first. first. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the podcast, we finally debut our Billy Beef's hat. You are our first okay. trifecta guest. I guess we got to get Billy to get you a hat now, too. Perfect. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thanks again, boys. Thanks for having me. Now, here's the real question, though, Rich, before you leave. Oh. If the total uh, downloads of all three of these podcasts now total up to beat the Kelly McCrimmon episode, that probably makes you the number one guest in, in Weekly Harvest uh, history. <laughs> I don't think he'll ever give that up. Man, so my, uh, <laughs> the king took, never took, gives up his crown. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It took three of mine to get to past his one. So uh, <laughs> just to, just to be spoken in the same sentence with the man is always good for me. So he's always been, uh, has always treated me very well, and always will be appreciative of what he's done for me. So that's that's good. Well, thanks again to Darren Ritchie, three time guest for the first time. I uh, love to get him back for four time number four as uh, <laughs> as as today in the office he said you know that's that's how I'll know when I really made it or when you guys have just scraped the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> so, don't worry. Yeah, we'll have to get him a plaque. Four time guest. Four Darren time. <laughs> four timer. Eventually he's gonna have to you know we have to keep doing this and help to flirt with the Ric Flair sixteen time world championship <laughs> run. <laughs> Woo for Darren Ritchie. Uh, <laughs> before we uh, get out of here this week, uh, we, we we do have a couple more things just to kind of wrap up. Uh, the email, qweeklyharvest at gmail.com. It's always open for you. So if you have anything you want to say, uh, you have any, co- any questions, comments, qweeklyharvest at gmail.com. Uh, Crow, coming up in the next little bit, uh, there's uh, going to be a whole lot going on like we just talked about in the hockey world. Meanwhile, back at the office, uh, there's also some uh, you know excitement going on as we're seeing a lot of the WHL live code being redeemed. Um, remember, just for season ticket holders, for season ticket holders only, you can uh, you can contact uh, the the office or go online and check out on on the on the team store. Uh, there's a special deal for the WHL Live that you get to purchase for this season. If you're not a season ticket holder, it's still a great price, fifty nine ninety nine. That gets you the entire season for every, every team. Game. Every yeah. team, every game. So if you want to watch the Central, you want to watch the U.S., uh, B.C., of course, still to be announced, but once that does start up, that'll be on there. But every game in the WHL, uh, you can go back, you can replay old games. So uh, it's a fantastic deal for, for 60 bucks to go pick that up. And they also have single-day passes where for that uh, for that day you can watch all the games happening. So I encourage you to go and check that out. And while you're on the Team Store website, Crow, I know that you're a Jersey guy. Did you see the deal on the old game jerseys? 
unreal. I I did, but I I'm I'm afraid that I've I've I'm not allowed to buy. <laughs> I have bought I bought uh, in the last month. I have purchased a. Uh, purple Anaheim Ducks Timu Solani Hall of Fame signed jersey. And, of course, I got that uh, Mighty Ducks uh, Disney prop from the original 1992 movie signed by the cast uh, all in the last month. Uh, so my jersey buying privileges have been revoked by the boss of this house and the lady that runs the finances. You did buy uh, but that hopefully nice I can though, talk today, to. didn't you? I'm going to throw I know, you under the I bus. Did, but I had to Look buy at that her, nice new hoodie. I had to buy her a T-shirt. So I got this new hoodie. <laughs> as long as you just divide. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah so, you're, so, so you're allowed to shop too but... much as long as you also treat the wife. That's a great rule. Yes. It makes total sense. It is. Uh, so for people uh, who are wondering, jersey though, guy, though. if they do like jerseys, so all of the old game jerseys, they're 50% off. So they're super, super cheap. Uh, again, the new ones are amazing, but we got boxes of the old ones, so it's a great time. Uh, start of the season, take advantage of that deal. You can check out more, though, at bwkstore.ca for that. You bet. Great store. Uh, it's all redone. If you haven't seen it, um, it's, it's it's going to be – it's. Yeah, it's all brand new. All brand new layout. Lots of new, um, not lots of new stuff. Uh, different looking hats. Some new hats. All sorts of stuff. Uh, the, the crew there, uh, you guys have done a great job of it. So um, oh, I know that our people hats. are getting excited. Okay, we got to oh, talk yeah. about this really quick. So, but it is not the BWK team store, but we finally got our Billy's beef hats. So, thank you to Billy for uh, for for coming on through. We're, we're we're both wearing them the entire pod this week. So, thanks for that. Appreciate it. We only had to buy. Of course, Billy's beef. I, I had to buy what Mark like 30, 30 pounds of sausage, <laughs> and talk about them on the pod uh, at least twenty thirty times now, probably randomly. <laughs> but we yeah. got them. And uh, but hey, I actually hey, really like the hat. This is the thing. So do like I. like for a free hey. promo hat. Like they're 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 nice. It fits well. Yeah, I like it. So here's the thing. If you guys are listening and you like you like some fresh farm beef, you like knowing where your stuff comes from. Farm to table. Check them out online. Farm to table. Yeah, check yep. them out online. It's Mark Der Lego and it's the family. So it's his wife Jenna Cowan and her brothers Nick and Dell. Uh, who also have Western League ties. Of course, Dell played in Brandon. Uh, Nick played out in the queue, played in Calgary, that sort of thing. Uh, a, a good Hartney local family, um, and it's right to your table. Check them out online. Send them an email or call them. Check them out on social media and say, hey, we heard about this on the podcast. If we make an order, maybe he'll throw in a free hat for you. There. I don't know. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. Tell him, tell him we sent you. There, that's all you got to do. Tell them we sent you. That'd be awesome. Uh, the Weekly Harvest, though, is, of course, not presented by Billy's Beef, but unofficially, officially brought to you by, I, I know, it, you see, we always, I always got to say, please drink responsibly. We got to kind of tread lightfully or, or tread lightly because it's an alcohol sponsor. But legitimately, my entire life, I have enjoyed responsibly Coors Lights. I, I really have <laughs> uh, to a point where I've enjoyed many, many irresponsible drinks bordering on the fact that, <laughs> you know, times could sometimes have a little more fun. Uh, thank you for coming on board. Coors Light for yet another episode. Uh, coming up next week, as we inch ever so closer, uh, once again, we are going to be kind of setting the stage for the season and uh, and talking directly about uh, the run-up with our good friend. Now we got Perry Berkson join the podcast next week, Crow. And then, uh, yeah, I, I, I honestly, we're going to talk about another guest. I think that we could just talk to Perry and just kind of fill up, like get, get ready for the season. Yeah, that's the thing too. Uh, if you guys are... I know you're a Weeking fan. If you're still listening to this, you're a Weeking fan through and through. Um, so here's what you got to do. Aside from emailing Billy uh, and asking for some burgers and some sausage to get a free hat, and also going to your liquor store to buy some Coors Light, head on down to the corner store on your way from picking up your beer and your beef and pick up every issue of the Brandon Sun from now till next Friday. Because Perry Bergson has a jam-packed Wheat King content coverage starting tomorrow. He's had a great stuff forever. But starting tomorrow, he's really hammering home this training camp. He's talked to players. He's talked to staff and everything. Uh, his coverage is great. Uh, I've got a bunch of stories stockpiled for training camp as well. But I know uh, we love supporting the Brandon Sun and supporting local journalism as well here uh, at Q Country and uh, with the Wheat King. So grab some beef. Grab some beers, grab a newspaper, sit up in your recliner, and uh, and get yourself ready for training camp. And we'll uh, hopefully get some thoughts from him uh, a little more in-depth next week. Until next week, hopefully uh, you all get to enjoy the nice weather. Uh, you know, springtime, it's coming, March. It, it, technically, 
I don't know if we're going to count this in like a lion out like a lamb or not. Today was technically March 1st. It wasn't like it was a storm, but it was pretty cold. It was pretty it was. cold. The wind sucked. Like minus today. 30 something. But then right away this rest of the week, it's all plus whatever. So we're going to take it. Happy spring. Big smiles. Hockey's on the way. Until next week. Cheers. See ya. Be sure to follow Q Country and the Wee Kings on Twitter and Facebook for all your Brandon Wee Kings news. Thanks for listening to the Weekly Harvest. Oh,